Hello everyone. Today we'll be taking a look at Microsoft Office Mobile on three different platforms. On the left we have Android, we have Windows Phone in the middle, and on the right we have iOS. So we're going to take a look at the software and see if there are any differences and similarities between the same software on different operating systems. Um, a couple of days ago, Microsoft announced that the mobile versions of Office for iOS over here on the right and Android on the left now come with free editing. Previously, you had to have an Office 365 subscription to be able to edit those documents on those platforms. So now without the need to have a subscription, now you're able to edit documents just as you are on Windows Phone. So let's take a look and see what we have. So each version of mobile office starts out the same place. It opens up into a window that has your most recent documents that you've used. And on Windows Phone is actually called recent. And then it shows things you've had today, this week, and so forth. On iOS and Android, it just it's just called today. But then from there, it goes to this week and so forth. So it doesn't really tell you that it's, it's recent. At the top on Android, they have a little clock. I guess it's showing you history or the times you've used it. And on iOS, it has the clock down at the bottom where it actually says recent. So I guess it just has it in different places. And we have an open icon, a new icon, and settings. On Windows Phone, we have a plus, so you can add a document, which basically means new. And then we have search. On Android, we have at the top, you can do a um, new document there. And then you also have where you can open a document as well. So we'll go ahead and take a look at an Excel spreadsheet. And the big thing about Office Mobile is that it ties into Microsoft's cloud services. So you can open documents from SharePoint, from OneNote, from OneDrive, you know, places like that, to where your documents, they stay with you regardless of which device you're using. So if I make changes on the Windows Phone, and then I open this document on Android, I have the option to use the latest version, same thing on iOS, and same thing on Office 2013 for the desktop. So I can use, I can edit documents on my computer and then open them on my mobile devices and have the latest versions. So the first thing to notice here is that the user interface is different between all three versions. Um, the Windows Phone version, Office is built into the OS, so there isn't an application for you to download. The good side is everybody gets Office. You don't have to think about it. Once you buy a Windows Phone, there it is, you have it. The bad thing with that is since it's built into the, the OS, it doesn't get updated often. Um, it pretty much only gets updated when Microsoft updates Windows Phone. And so with the new version of Windows Phone about to be released, that is Windows Phone 8.1, hopefully Office will get an upgrade. But until then, what we have is our navigation bar is at the bottom. So we can see the icon for um, tabs, formulas, search. And then the last one is to sort. And you can also apply filters there. On Android, our same bar that's on Windows Phone is at the top. So you have tabs, search, filter, and then you have formulas. But then on the iPhone, it's a mixture. You have your bar at the top where you can do a new page, you can edit, and then you can um, view as well. But then at the bottom for tabs, it has the actual tabs that you would see as if you were on a desktop version. And I actually prefer having my tabs at the bottom. That way I can just click on them go to different tabs instead of having to click the tabs button and then choosing the tab which is the same thing on Android you click the tab button and then you choose the tabs in the new layout so it's more familiar here on iOS it's just like it is on your desktop okay and also your options are in different places um, you can press your three dots on Android to get to options three dots on Windows Phone to get the options as well. And when you press your, let me go back, press your button, it's like a little eyeball at the top where I just pressed on iOS. And then that gives you your options. Not sure why it's an eye instead of three dots or something that's similar to the other ones. But that's where you get your apply filter and other option that you need. And you have to actually click on the edit button here to get your edit options. So 
So it's not exactly a uniform user interface on all of them. Each operating system has a slightly different interface. And I'm hoping that Microsoft decides which one they would like to go to. Um, I would like to see the tab stay at the bottom and potentially add the, the user interface bar from Android on the top of all of them. Because to me, it looks the best. But as far as usability, they all pretty much scroll and, and scroll the same. Um, it's not slow on any of them. The Android one scrolls really, really fast. And so fast, in fact, that sometimes the cells don't even load. Um, the iPhone kind of keeps up pretty good. And the same thing with the Windows Phone version. So regardless of which version you have, you'll get a, a speedy experience with full editing. So let's go back and take a look at the Word document. Okay. So we can get this one to load. Oh, that one doesn't load. So we'll go to this other one here. Same document, online storage as well. It has connect and download because I've never downloaded it here. So this is how it works for you. Um, it's downloading the document and then it's like a copy of it saved on your phone. So we have the same Word document. Pictures show. And of course you can rotate your phone into landscape view and see things differently um, or you can have it into portrait really isn't any difference on how the documents are displayed on any one of them so there isn't like a speed advantage um, just the different formatting depending on the resolution of your screen so we have a 720p screen the text looks a little bigger then we have 1080p screen and so forth Okay, let's go into the PowerPoint. Oddly enough, it looks like for the iOS one, um, you have to tap the screen to get your your um, your menu. So let me go back here. So the Windows Phone one, they all go into full screen, except for on iOS, you can't see your time or anything. The time stays at the top on these two, and you basically touch the screen and it brings up your menus. And once again, Office on Windows Phone has your options at the bottom, whereas the newer versions have your settings at the top. So I would assume that with the newer version of Office for Windows Phone in the future, that it's probably going to move the settings to the top. Or it may stick with them at the bottom, since this is how Windows Phone is. Most of their settings are at the bottom. And then you have a back circle button, which is actually the Windows Phone back button. And... In Android, you have the actual Office logo with the little back button. And let's go look at the PowerPoint. And it's going to download the PowerPoint from OneDrive. Okay, here we are in PowerPoint. Controls at the bottom. There's your show all slides. Androids at the top show all slides, and iPhone at the top show all slides. And so the iPhone uses a white background, whereas the other two use a black background. I actually prefer the black background because it's easier to see the end of the slides. They kind of look like they run together a little bit on the iPhone there. And so we're just Go into there. So you can rotate it. And get your full screen view. This is a presentation that I'll be teaching soon about Android. And so it's, it's the same for them, for all of them. And it says, tap to add notes. Tap to add notes, but then the Windows Phone one says, no notes added. But if you tap it, it adds notes. So maybe when they update it, they'll make the wording the same. 
because no notes added to me doesn't tell me that I can tap it to add notes. So I, I like that on the newer ones, you can tap the add notes in there. And when you go in to, um, to add a note, let me go back to the same page. So on Windows Phone and on iOS, it shows you that you have your title there. And let me make sure I'm on the same page here, which I wasn't. So you have your title on these two, on Windows Phone and iOS. On Android, the title isn't there. So I'm not really sure by looking at this where I am. But on here, it shows that I'm on the first slide, and that's my title, and I can add notes. So I'm not sure, but I, I would hope that they would add this into the Android user interface so I can at least know where I'm adding these notes to. You got a cancel button and a done there at the top. Windows Phone is at the bottom again, following the usual Windows Phone interface. There's cancel is the X, the check mark is done. And you can just press your buttons there to see what it says. Cancel and done, and then cancel and done at the top there. So we're going to cancel on all because I don't want to make any changes here. And then on iOS, there's your edit button at the top that allows you to do different things. And here are the options that we have. You go back there. So overall, regardless of which operating system that you use, you'll have the same editing experience. Um, and this is a high level look. We didn't get down into any options or actually edit anything in these slides. But it basically, you'll be able to open and edit your documents and use those as you need to on the go. Um, I think it's a great idea. Because regardless of what operating system you have, you have access to Microsoft Office. It does seem like that it's a blow to Windows Phone, though, because that's one less thing, one less advantage that they had before. But one thing I would like to note is when it comes to opening documents, currently, Windows Phone is the only operating system that has Office where you can open local documents. So this is a, a big thing. Because on iOS and on Android, I can only open documents from one of the cloud storage locations. So when I click open, you can either do from my SkyDrive or you have to add a place, which is another place, another um, um, cloud location, OneDrive, Office 365, or SharePoint. It's the same thing here. But on Windows Phone, you can have documents stored on your phone in your email, SkyDrive, which is now OneDrive. And that goes back to the whole office not being able to be updated unless the operating system is updated. So maybe with the new Windows Phone, SkyDrive, uh, Windows Phone 8.1, SkyDrive will be renamed to OneDrive as it is now. I can have different places in SharePoint and so forth. So that's a big difference there to where I can literally plug my phone to the computer and transfer a document over to my phone and then have it on the phone, or I can save a document to my phone and then have it there. So before we finish up, let's take a look at creating new documents. So I'll go back on each one and we will do new. So you pretty much have the same options. On the blank documents, you can create Word and Excel document. Templates, they have agenda, outline, and reports for Word, and then they have templates for Excel as well. So the same exact thing for each one. We'll go into a new budget. You get your same template here. And let's see. So I'm just looking through some settings. There we go. Looking at our save options. So we got save as, save as, save as. And so here's where that comes in again. If I want to save this document, I can only save these to a OneDrive location, a SkyDrive location, or SharePoint versus 
on Windows Phone, I can choose to save on my phone or to SkyDrive, aka OneDrive. So with that being said, the advantages of the Windows Phone version in my eyes are being that it's pre-installed. So every Windows Phone will have Office, unlike with Android and iOS, it's only up to the user to pretty much know that Office exists and then to go and download that from the store. And also that you can have your documents saved locally to your device to make use of them from there. Well, I want to thank you all again for taking a look at this video. Um, I do apologize for it being so long, but it is a great thing for everyone that Office is available on multiple platforms. And they also made Office available for the iPad. Um, but again, that one does have to have the Office 365 subscription, which um, I don't know too many people that have it, but obviously someone does. So hopefully those people can enjoy that as well. And the Office on the iPad is pretty much just like the one that is on the desktop as far as the looks and the ribbons and things like that. But it is touch optimized, which the Office that's on the Windows tablets isn't touch optimized yet. You can use it with touch, but it's not a specific touch interface. So when I open Office on my Dell Venue 8 Pro, you just get the desktop version of Excel versus on the iPad. This is my first time opening Excel on the iPad. So it's just explaining how you need the Office 365 and how your changes are saved automatically and so forth. So I'm going to do view for free because I don't want to buy Office 365 Home. And so there's Office and there's Office. So you have your touch optimized and non touch optimized versions. Very similar. We'll just open some templates. And they're not exactly the same um, templates here. And so at the top you have your, your ribbons. And it's the same here, but since this is a full computer and this is full Windows 8, and it's full Office 2013, and not one that's made specifically for touch or it doesn't have any limitations, you just get the full version of Office, the same exact one that you have on your desktop or laptop. So even though it's great for, for the iPad, it's still missing a couple of things. And I do hope that they, if once they make a touch optimized one for Windows 8, that it doesn't lose any of the functionality. All right. Thank you all so much for watching these videos and taking a look here as we go over Office for the different operating systems. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments below. Thank you again and have a great day.